Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. It is, of course, the Little League World oh. Series, not the World Cup. Let's get that straight before they rip up my US oh, passport. Like a faux pas there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Of course, I, I would have jumped in to help you if I uh, yep. could have. Seb's at home there, though. He likes it. He's what? He's at home in the Little League. It's good. Everyone's the same size of him. <laughs> uh, Frank joins us as well. How are you, Frank? I'm good. Thank you very much. Wonderful. I'm good. Happy. Uh, yeah, a good life. My oh. daughter just arrived in Normandy, so oh, lovely. I mean, he's around, so it's perfect. Oh, good. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad. Is Craig back with full positivity after your uh, holiday? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. He's in quite a good mood. Wouldn't go that far. I haven't seen any grumps yet. <laughs> yeah, he's been, he's been quite chirpy, Frank. Well, nothing to grump about, really. Today, yeah, isn't yeah. It? Or Friday. When was in Friday? Yeah. Uh, how, yeah. Long is, how long do you think it's going to last? Uh, I don't know. Till the Ballon d'Or's discussed? <laughs> it's, this is very simple. <laughs> Until somebody says something silly oh, that dear. needs to be jumped upon <laughs> yep. from a great height, okay. then, then that's what... We, we talked about this during the show, didn't we? Does, any, me off. does anything sum up Chelsea's transfer strategy better than a the bloke they sold for £25 million, weaving past the midfield duo they spent over £200 million on and putting one in the top corner? Hmm. About right, yeah. Uh, you know, clearly Man City wanted and knew they needed cover for Rodri. They had Calvin Phillips, but, you know, they, yep. I don't think he ever convinced uh, Guardiola. So I think he knew if somehow that Kovacic was on the market and Chelsea would let him go for, it seems, a bit of a paltry, I think it was 25 million? Yes, that's what, that's what this tweet says. Oh, I can't. I've got my glasses. Yeah. Well, I have, but I can't be bothered to put them on. Right, OK. Well, so uh, so in the, when, he signed, when, but when he did sign him, I went, that's good business. Just because this guy has played at the highest level for many, many years, and the city manager was bright enough to know he, he, he needed cover, and Chelsea went off in there. Uh, their direction, which is still continuing. Uh, Craig, can Grealish get back into this current City eleven, especially with Doku and Savio looking effortlessly good going forward? Well, I think Savio did at times. I'm not, I'm not so convinced in Jeremy Doku, although he's a young man. He's very raw. He's How very... much can you teach him? Like it's that final ball, isn't it? That, that, that would you frustrate you if you're a Manchester City. I think fan. there's an element you can teach him about <clears throat> getting in the final third and picking your head up and being more poised and less rushed and playing the right pass. And if that doesn't happen, you're sitting on the bench. If you think about Jack Grealish's first season at Man City, the end product wasn't great. And he struggled a little bit, or a lot, whatever way you want to look at it. The second season, Jack Grealish was all about end product. Mm -hmm. Less touches, more product in the final third. And ultimately, he had his best season since he's been at Manchester City. And Jeremy Docker's going to have to figure that out. He's got the pace, he's got the ability, he's got the tricks. <clears throat> but he needs to pick out the final pass at the right time or score goals. And I think there's a big question mark about whether he can do that on a regular basis or not. Now, maybe it'll be an opportunity for Jack Grealish. I think a lot of it comes down to Jack Grealish. Right. You know, what's the summer been like? How's the injuries? You know, what you like in training? He's, he's got the quality. Uh, different players, clearly, Doku and Grealish, but it all boils down to the same thing. What can you do for me in the final third? And at the moment, Jeremy Doku, as a still a young man, but that's a bit of a hit and a miss. Frank? Um, I, love, I love Doku in a way that he offers something that the other players don't. In a way that he can, he will take on players, he will challenge uh, the, his opponent every time that he has the ball. Yes, he can be clumsy uh, at some times, and I agree with Craig. He has to be more precise in the last pass, and maybe when he shots, and we saw that in some crosses today, or shots with his left foot that he put like 20 yards away. But I remember some games last season where City were slow, they couldn't get anything, and Doku came on and changed everything because of his pace, because he put the mess in the defense, because he's very stubborn in the way that he wants to challenge, as I said before, the opponent, and he offers again something different. Grealish, good in passes, Bernardo Silva the same, Kevin De Bruyne the same, Jay, uh, Foden the same, Doku is different. Maybe not as good in passes the ball as the others, for sure. But to put the mess in the defense, Doku is the right guy for me. It might be both of them on the bench. You, Frank mentioned Foden, could be Foden yeah. and Savino. Yeah. And no player likes to hear it. 
No player likes to hear it, but maybe he is for the time being as a young man, better coming on 55, 60 minutes. When there's a yeah. little bit of, as Frank said, when there's a little bit of fatigue and tiredness, particularly early in the season, <clears throat> when players are still getting up to, to, to match speed, is coming on on, as I say, on the hour mark or wherever, and injecting that incredible pace and directness. Maybe that's a better avenue than starting more of the games. We, we, we'll see. Uh, I think, I think Craig, I think Craig, that was the role. That was his role when he signed at first, yeah. uh, because Grealish was in the first eleven with with Foden and Kevin De Bruyne and Alan. There was no room for him. And as you mentioned, he was the right guy to finish the game and to uh, and to disturb the defense. And uh, that's that was the plan. I think he was aware of that. Uh, it's only because Grealish wasn't good last season that he has the chance to play. But that's a very good possibility that you, uh, you, were, you were saying. It's not that any of these boys are bad players, it's just that you're at Man City and there are other players that can do the job. When you, that's the problem when you're at that club. There are other players that can do the job arguably better when you lose a bit of form. A lot of clubs, when you lose a little bit mm. of form, you stay in the side right. because the options are not great. But at City, it's different if you... And that's why they've been the champions how many years they've been it. Is because when standards have dropped a little bit, it doesn't take six games for you to be out of the team. It takes a game or two. And the manager makes a decision. And, you know, yeah. that's something you just have to cope with at, at, at Man City. But these players are all super talented. Uh, but the bottom line, it comes down to finishing off and creating chances. Now, this is something we discussed on the show as well. Frank mentioned when he moved from Chelsea, to Marseille, he took a pay cut because he wanted to play football because John Terry was playing ahead of him. Craig, if you're Sterling, would you offer to reduce your salary so you can secure a move? Three years, of course, he has his on, left on his contract. Well, I think what would probably happen is he would get some sort of payoff from the club to go somewhere else. That's generally how these things are manoeuvred. But, but, but yeah, I mean, if you don't need for any financial assistance, as I would imagine, and Frank touched on this in the show, that most, most of these players are, are super wealthy. Then it comes down to the fact, do I want to stay here as a frustrated player getting big bucks, mm -hmm. or do I want to take slightly less and go and finish my career when I'm playing every week? And, and I think, to me, in the modern game, with the money that's been around, that seems like the sensible move. Uh, but then not everybody, you know, thinks that way, and sometimes you have advisors behind the scenes that will say, no, no, no. I don't know. I don't yes, know. The, the advisors behind the scenes thought that statement was a good idea. Yeah, which would then worry me in terms yeah. of saying to him, just sit it out and take your money. Yeah, so yeah I, exactly. I don't know. Uh, this is for Craig, but Craig talks about this a lot, Frank. I wanted to get your opinion. Do you think Ancelotti will have to drop <laughs> one of the front three, Rodrigo against opposition such as Barcelona and Atletico Madrid, with the front three starting? They're struggling in the middle of the park and defensively. That could be a possibility. That's going to be hard for one of the players. And I think, I guess, Rodrigo uh, will be sacrificed because you want to see, and everybody in the world want to see Vinicius Junior playing with Mbappe. And, um, and for Rodrigo, it's going to be harder to play. But I, 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 I was following what you were saying on the, on the game of Real Madrid. And I agree with the fact that uh, I think it's. Uh, uh, Luis Garcia said it that it was too cr too crowded, mm. and when you and it's not because you are with numbers at front that you're gonna sc you're gonna score more goals because in in, the, in that way you have you will have less space less spaces and uh, and Mallorca found a way to kind of park the bus and he didn't open anything to uh, to the Real Madrid players and and uh, so maybe you have to have only two forwards to allow uh, Bellingham to go forward like he did last season. Maybe to allow also the the wings uh, the wings back to to uh, to, uh, to also go on the on the side, uh, but yeah, at some point you will have to decide to uh, sacrifice one player, and I'm afraid it's going to be Rodrigo, yeah, the man who scored. He didn't try and sugarcoat it at the end, though, did he, Ancelotti? No, Ancelotti doesn't. He, doesn't <clears> he didn't come out and say, "Well, you know, I got all these you got these new players and Bappy's coming in." We're trying. He just said, "Well, attitude, you know, not good enough." Yeah. That, you know, just need, this is a problem. He said, we can clearly see this is a problem after match day one, which was quite a big uh, statement to make, which, which makes me think he'll just say, as soon as he feels somebody has to be benched, and again, it's gone back to what we talked about with Man City and some of these players, the best managers are not frightened to make big decisions. Yeah. And obviously, very early, but he's got some big ones coming up. Um, 
the quality of the opening week matches is not up to par. Why don't the players go on strike before the FIFA Club World Cup next year or do they want a taste of the €2 billion Euro prize money? This is obviously talking about players uh, playing too much. Well, I think always at the start of the season, you can play as many pre-season games as you want, but the intensity of a domestic league game is way higher than any pre-season game. You can't replicate it. Right. And so, I don't know what Frank thinks. I always found it took a few, three or four games, maybe half a dozen games to really get up to speed. So you never get the full, not commitment, but you never get the full experience until that sharpness is there. That being said, the crux of that point is a problem. There are, and it seems to be just getting ignored, that the modern, the, the players these days, and I don't care how much you earn, that's not the point. If you want this game to be the global phenomenon that it is to continue, you can't continue to flog mm. because the product is affected. And I think we're already, whilst it's not affecting the product per se at the moment, I think we're seeing more and more injuries and more and more fatigue. And all these extra... Champions League this year, more games. It seems to be unique in football as yeah. well. You know, NFL, obviously, baseball, basketball. There, 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 there are breaks there in, in other big sports. And there doesn't you know, seem to be any you know, rest. Club World Cup. We have the Champions League expanding. We have, and it's been a success, <clears throat> the UEFA Conference League. But it's just more and more and more on top of an already crowded mm. schedule. If I was playing now, the money would be great, but it'd drive me nuts. You look at the calendar and you think, when am I going to get a break? When am I going to get... <clears throat> when am I going to get four weeks or six weeks rest in the summer? They get, some of these players be lucky if they get two weeks now. Yeah. Now, that's not... That is not... Trust me. That is not sustainable. Just because there's more money coming in, just because there's more commercial activity, just because the game is never going to be richer, doesn't mean... In five years' time, the game is going to be better. Because more more does not mean necessarily better quality. I, don't, I, I honestly don't know how these players are going to cope in the next few years with all these summer competitions. I, I, I really don't. Frank? Yeah, it's, a, it's an issue. I mean, um, I had the chance to play for a big club, Chelsea. And it's true, for five years, we didn't have a break in winter. Um, I had tournaments um, every two years, but also uh, from some years, we didn't have the World Cup or European Championship. We played the French tournaments in 97, then we played something else in 99. And um, I had like between two and three weeks holidays. And you can feel that you get tired and you have to choose the game that you want to play in. And uh, you have to talk to the coach. On top of it, those, those clubs now, they go to on USA Tour, which yeah. is very nice for everybody and the fans, and they can see them. But the, the, the jet lag, uh, the tightness of it, I mean, so many games, so many training sessions. And then you come back a week before uh, to, to start the Premier League, for example, and you don't have the time to... to um, to, to, uh, to um, um, digest the jet lag. I mean, we all have been traveling a lot. You know, when you travel and get like six hours or nine hours uh, time different, you know that it takes like at least three, four, five days to recover. Then you have to train. And then you have to play the first day of the Premier League. Nah, it doesn't work like that. So they will have to choose. I mean, clubs are big now. You have like 50, 60 people uh, traveling. So I guess the, the, the squad is bigger. They will have to pick a team for, for example, the Premier League and the Champions League and another, another team for the uh, domestic uh, uh, competition, uh, like the League, the League Cup, sorry, and uh, the FA Cup. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to work. You want to have uh, freshness, it's impossible. You will have to choose. When we come off the back of the World Cup in 98 <clears throat> at Celtic, there was seven or eight players all within the first three or four months of the season. And they weren't all Scottish, by the way, because we were always home early. <laughs> uh, but there was Scandinavians out there and, and, and so forth, playing for Denmark and others and, and, and Norway. They were all injured. Right. And that was in 98 when there was less games. Because I think we had, like, even for us, it was a couple of weeks before back at pre-season. And if you watched the Spanish game today, the Real Madrid game, you would have learned that all we needed to know at the time 
was eat more uh, broccoli. Broccoli. Yeah, Danny Carvajal. Danny Carvajal yeah. is injured less because he eats more broccoli. Yeah, that was the now, end. if only we'd known that. Yep. What was great was going, Ian Dark goes, <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah, Darky. Darky's not a broccoli fan. I think he's well past the stage, Ian, and there's not enough broccoli on the planet. But it's amazing that. And, you know, it's, you pick up these niggles because you don't get the rest, and I don't want to go on about it, but it's, I think it's clear for everybody to see that you can't just keep rolling one season into a major championship, into a Club World Cup, into an extended Champions League with more games. You just can't keep adding. It's not, it's just quite simply not sustainable. Craig, have you been in a team that got spanked at home yeah. in the first game of the season like Everton this weekend? And how can a coach turn it around with any good vibes of pre-season no, out, gone out the window? I don't think so, no, not in the first game. Uh, I think there was a little bit of positivity about Everton. I was reading that it could be, and it might be a much better season for them, but certainly that wasn't a great start. It got absolutely pummeled by mm. Brighton, who've got the youngest manager in the league. 31. 31. Yeah. It's quite crazy, isn't it, really? How's that work? Well, well he was born 31 <laughs> years ago, I mean. That's, that's, that's how it works. I think that's how age works. Yeah, I know, I know, but 31, man. Anyway, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, I, it's a club that's... It's got its problems. It's, it's got its problems and that. And I looked at the side and I thought, just, just looks like last year's really. Yeah. And the same kind of players and Calvert-Lewin up front. And I'm like, just, just, I mean, experienced coaching staff, experienced manager who will get the best out of them. But my God, they're, they're a limited bunch. Final question, welcome back, Craig. Tell us something you enjoyed during your holiday. Get him folding his arms. Look, uh, what do you mean? What I enjoyed? It's. I think. It, I think the question is so clear. What did you? What, what well, the, 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 the easy answer would be golf. Okay, you enjoy playing golf. <laughs> no, I always enjoy playing golf. Oh, that's good. No, but right. I, I, I just enjoy. Lovely. I, well, I tell you what. Tell Not what, seeing Dan Thomas face every day. Shut up, Frank. No one don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> that's your opinion. Don't take this the wrong way. But I enjoyed not having to do my usual. Mammoth prep for the show. Yeah, that's true. So I was People able don't to... see the behind the scenes effort. They don't see the in. pages. No. They don't see the writing. The stats. They don't see. They no. Don't, they, don't they might see... look and think, well, but you've got nothing in front of you. Where's all your information? Where's all your research? <laughs> Upstairs. It's, I'm a minefield, yeah. a sponge yeah. of information. But people don't realise behind the scenes the work that goes into no. this. And I, I didn't. I, I was. I was. I needed the break. Yeah, it was nice. Just. Well, very nice. Take your foot off the gas. My, my computer. Thank me for it. Yeah. Such is the, uh, <laughs> Such is the, the battering I give And it. the research department. You're always on the phone to them, aren't you? Asking them oh, for I mean, information. And I, honestly, the top 10 goals. Yep. Oh. Oh, they'll be back tomorrow. Oh, that's a nice And lift. guess what? Craig is off. I thought he'd be on tomorrow. Spurs are playing, Atletico Madrid. Do I make the schedule? I don't know. Why does that involve looking at your watch? I want to go home. Uh, <laughs> Leicester against Spurs, Atleti against Villarreal. I'll be looking back at both of those games on the next edition of the show. So uh, join us if you can.